Israel, they found themselves doing evil in the sight of God. And because they did evil in the sight of God, this time they found themselves living under the oppression of the Midianites, under Midian. And so when God called on Gideon to lead Israel out from under this oppression, Gideon, he was not excited. In fact, he was a bit reluctant. He was hesitant to do this. He was more frustrated and upset with God that God hadn't did anything. So when God put him in the position to lead, Gideon, he was ready to back out. So in our lesson this week, we take a look at reluctance, why we must not fear. When God calls on us, we must be ready to answer his call. We must be ready to be obedient and move in faith. This scripture outside of our lesson this week, you can see where Gideon, he asked, how could he save Israel? We'll see this in the sixth chapter of Judges, verses 15 and 16, where Gideon, he then made excuses of his clan being the weakest in Manasseh and him being the least in his father's house. See, these excuses, they, they didn't work with God as the Lord, he had heard this kind of stuff before. And as he had did with many others, the Lord, he assured Gideon that he would be with him. Many of us do the same thing when God gives us an assignment that we think is too tall or too big for us. When God tells us that our blessing is over there and the road looks tough for us, again, we will be just as Gideon. We will be reluctant, we'll be hesitant to move. Now, we'd be quick to point the finger when we say that God hasn't given us a blessing. We'd be quick to to blame God when we are going through some things and God hasn't brought us out of our tribulation. But when God gives us the power, when he gives us the authority to move and it looks like it's gonna be too tough for us, we will be hesitant, we will be reluctant. As I have said before, we can't be reluctant. We can't be hesitant to move in our faith. As I have said before as well, faith, it is not just enough for you to say you believe in God. Faith is an action and you must be willing to act in your faith. Once again, in scripture outside of our lesson there in the sixth chapter of Judges, verses 28 through 30, we'll see that God had commanded Gideon to tear down an altar of Baal, which he did. And after he had did this, we'll see that all of a sudden that action it drew out the Midianite army, which was joined together with the Amalekites as well. So the time had come for Gideon to now move and to deliver Israel from the seven years of oppression under Midian. Now the opening verse here in our lesson this week, there in the second verse, it shows us that Gideon, he had amassed an army that the Lord said was too many to give the Midianites into the hands of Israel. Now I believe that Gideon, he had amassed an army the size enough that he believed would be able to take on both the armies of Midian and the Amalekites. And when you think about it, the fact that he would be able to amass such a large army as you'll see here in the coming verses. It's actually amazing considering that Israel hadn't did anything to get out from under the oppression themselves in the seven years that they had been under the oppression of the Midianites. So it's amazing that he amassed the army the size that you'll see here in a moment. So the question that we will have is why would God turn around after Gideon has amassed such a large army and say, this army, it is too big. What would God have against Gideon amassing an army the size that he did? Scripture tells us there in the second verse that the Lord, he did not want Israel to be claiming that they got the victory by their own strength, that they got the victory by their own might. The Lord did not want them to claim glory for themselves rather than to give him the glory. Now, this is something that many people who are of no faith don't quite understand about all of us who are of faith. They will ask you, why do you always give God credit when it is you that put in the work? They'll wonder what has God did for you? Something that all of those who lack faith, who may be trying to grow in faith today, something that you must learn 
and you take this from my experience, you make nothing possible yourself. With God, all things are possible. Try as much as you might. You don't have the power to bless yourself. So we'll see there in the third verse that the Lord had Gideon to trim down his army. The initial cut saw 22,000 men were told their leave while another 10,000 remained. Now, this gives us an idea for the size of the army that Gideon had amassed. Gideon had amassed an army that was at least 32,000 men. Then we'll see that the Lord said to Gideon once again, the army is still too large. Now at that point, you have to imagine that Gideon was probably confused. Gideon, you know, he was thinking logically, I have to match, try my best as much as I can. I have to match the army that I am going up against. And here God is telling Gideon, nope, that is too much. You have too big of an army. Let's trim it down. And so you have to imagine by this point, Gideon is going, man, what, what does the Lord expect for me to do? Why is he continuing to tell me too much, too much, too much? What does he expect me to do to go with an army that is smaller in comparison than the armies that I'm about to go up against? You know, God, his thoughts, they are much higher than our thoughts that we can't simply understand his thoughts. And so we must learn to trust in him. Be obedient. As we have seen, obedience equals success. So God here in the fourth verse, he had Gideon put the men to a test, a test that I nicknamed the dog test. The reason for this test was to see who had the true desire to face Midian and Amalek. Now the specifics of the test is given to us in scripture that is again outside of our lesson. So let's take a look here at the fifth verse where we'll see that the men were led to some water and those who would lap up water like a dog, meaning that they would drink water in a position to be on guard and ready, just in case danger presented itself, they were to be the ones that would be selected. And so after this test, we'll see that the final number for those going up against the Midianite army was only 300. Now, some liken this process of elimination, better yet, this process of selection, they will liken it to God's divine election, which it certainly holds up to be very similar. The reason why I say that is because all of those that are God fearing, we are always on watch. We are always on guard. We are always waiting. Now, what are we on watch for? What are we on guard for? What are we always waiting for? What are we looking in anticipation for? Well, we're looking for the coming of Christ. Now, there are many that live among us today that aren't watching and waiting. In fact, they mock us for always waiting for Christ. They say, hey, he hasn't come yet. What are you watching for? What are you waiting for? Well, the Lord has said, no man knows the day nor the hour of when he will come. So we're always watching. We're always waiting because we don't want to miss him. Again, in more scripture outside of our lesson this week, we'll see where Gideon wasn't confident. The Lord said to Gideon that on the same night, if he would just go down to the camp of the enemy, he said he promises and he reassured that the enemy will be delivered into the hands of Israel. But Gideon, if he was afraid, the Lord said, eavesdrop, go down to the camp, go to the outsides of the camp and eavesdrop. And if you do this, you will hear, you will gain some strength in your hands. So what do you think Gideon chose to do? Well, when we look at scripture again, that is in our Sunday school lesson, when we take a look at the 13th verse, we'll see there that Gideon was afraid to take the camp. We'll see that the reluctant, the hesitant Gideon had returned. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm speaking bad or evil about Gideon out of maliciousness or anything like that, because I'm certainly not doing that because many of us, we are just like Gideon today. When God makes a promise to us, when he assures us that we will get our blessing if we just move in faith, many of us, we are hesitant, we are reluctant, we are fearful to move in faith towards our blessing. When we have learned in recent weeks that our obedience, our faithfulness to God's instructions leads to success, it leads to the blessing. So we know we know, and again, we have learned 
that we should trust in God and that we should move in obedience. But again, fear. It would delay us from our blessing. Israel, they could have received their blessing that night. But Gideon, because of his reluctance to move, he delayed the blessing for Israel. So when Gideon and his servant, when they snuck down to the camp to, to eavesdrop on what they could hear, they heard one soldier telling a dream to another who was able to then decipher the dream. The soldier told the other the dream was of Gideon leading Israel to defeat the Midianites. So even the soldiers, even the soldiers believed that their defeat was at hand as God was going to deliver them into the hands of Israel. If they could think that, or if they could believe that, why could Gideon not? Now, after Gideon had heard of this dream, we're told in the 15th verse that it caused him to worship and he returned back to the camp of Israel full of excitement and he was fired up. He was ready to go and, and he called on Israel to arise for God had delivered the camp of Midian into their hands. Gideon, he is filled with confidence, isn't he? Honestly, I think it's amazing that it took Gideon to eavesdrop on the conversation of two soldiers and for him to overhear one deciphering the dream of another for him to all of a sudden just be confident, you know, feel with all sorts of confidence that that Israel could take the army of the Midianites and the Amalekites. But again, I suppose all of us are this way. When when God had promised Gideon that victory was theirs, he should have moved in faith, but he delayed. He was hesitant. And again, many of us are the same way. We God can promise us the blessing, but we are slow, we're hesitant, but then we'll go talk to a family member or a friend. All of a sudden their assurance, I guess is better than the Lord's, but it'll give us confidence. And I would say, again, not speaking evil about this, this is why God puts us in each other's life, because sometimes we have to lean on one another. We have to be reassured by each other. So. And that is why it is so good for you to surround yourself with those who will uplift rather than those that will tear down. So we'll see there in the 22nd and then in the 23rd verse that Gideon and Israel, they did defeat Midian. Sadly, however, we see that the men of Israel, they desire for Gideon and his house to have rule over them. It would seem that they didn't learn anything. God desired for them to glorify him, but these men, they didn't realize that the praise belonged to the Lord. They were giving it to Gideon. So Gideon, we'll see, he called their attention to the Lord because that's where the praise, that's where the glory belonged. And he said that he would not have rule over them, but that God would have rule over them. However, on an even sadder note, we'll see there in the final verses of our lesson for this week, that after making this statement, Gideon, he asked for the people's earrings, their gold, as he would make a garment that sadly in scripture that is outside of our lesson, you will see that the people, they ended up worshiping that effort. So yeah, that, that truly is a sad moment there because again, God had did for Israel what they had cried out for, what, what Gideon was so frustrated and upset about. The Lord had delivered for them. And so again, we have to remember about these people is that these people, they had lived under the oppression of the Midianites for seven years. So it wasn't quite so easy for them to let go of the evil that they had did. Something that I believe all of us can take away from this lesson this week again is obedience. It leads to success. We must trust in the Lord. Even when we are reluctant in our faith, we must learn to be obedient and move in our faith. When we do so, God will deliver us to our blessing. We'll be able to take possession of our blessing. Now, when we take possession of our blessing, don't think for one second that you did it by your own power, by your own wit, by your own might, because you did not do so. Be sure you stop and give God the glory, give God the thanks. OK, that is what we ask his children, those who are of sincere faith. That is what we should do.
recognize God. And when you do this again, you will be favored. You will be highly blessed in the eyes of God. Lean on him, depend on him, trust in the Lord and God again, he will bless you. Thank you.